2 to the 4th. It's 2 to the 4th. 16? 16. So negative 8 over 16, which is negative 1 half. Oh, yeah, yeah, this, that's fair game for the test. Uh-oh. All right. Um... Okay, last, last one in this section, I think. Find the equation of the tangent line to the curve y equals x over 1 plus x squared at... at the point 3.3. So this, in this problem, we're, we're being asked for the equation of the tangent line, right? Equation of tangent line. So for the equation of the tangent line, we need y minus y1 equals the slope of the tangent line x minus x1. All right, that's the equation we're going to wind up using. We just need to know the slope of the tangent line. The slope of the tangent line is the derivative, right? And then we plug in the x value. So what is our derivative of x over 1 plus x squared? What would we have to do for this? Quotient rule? Right? But we just did this problem, didn't we? Isn't that the exact same problem we just did? We did x over 1 plus x squared. But we found the second derivative in the previous problem. For this problem, all we need is the first derivative, right? Which we had sitting right here, right? That was our first derivative. So I'm going to not obviously show all that work again. It was, uh, what was it? Okay, there we go. That's our derivative, right? At x equals what value? What do we get? At x equals 3, we get that the slope of the tangent line would then be 1 minus 3 squared over 1 plus 3 squared squared. 3 squared is 9, so negative 8 over 10 squared, 100 on the bottom. All right, 3 squared is 9 plus 1 is 10. 10 squared is 100. Negative, what goes into those both, right? 4 goes in there, 2 20 fifths. Negative 2 20 fifths. That's just the slope of the tangent line, isn't it? So now going back to the equation, it'll be y minus what? 0.03, or no, 0 0.3 equals negative 2 over 25 x minus 3. So y equals negative 2 over 25, x minus 3, plus 0.03, or 0.3.
I'm not going to distribute the negative 2 over 25 through the parentheses. I'm just going to leave it. I just, all I did was move the point 3 to the other side. Questions on that? It's all right? All right. So let's see here. That was the graph. It was x over 1 plus x squared. I don't know why it's cutting stuff off over there. That's weird. It looks like it's cutting off these weird segments of my graph, and I don't know why that is. Is that what it is? Is it the numbers? Okay, let me do this. View. a little better. Okay, so there's the graph, right? <clears throat> and we're supposed to go out to the x value of 3, which is somewhere around here, and we're supposed to find the equation of the tangent line. So let's see if we got it. It's negative 2 over 25 x minus 3 plus 0.3. Pretty damn good to me. I'm convinced. Are you convinced? And we can always have the computer do it for us. The slider, bring in the tangent, go to three, and yeah, we're right on top. Okay? So we did the same thing that we did in the past, except now our function's a little more involved. We're using the quotient. We have to use quotient rule to get that derivative. All right, let me give you the homework assignment that I'd like for this section. So for the homework for uh, 2.4, you should be looking. This is going to be a lot of problems. It's going to be 3 through... Thirty-three. Odd. Now we're ready for 2.5. <clears throat> this will be the last bit of material on the test. I think what we're going to do is we're going to touch the chain rule. We're not going to get real, real deep into chain rule. And that way the problem, the level of the problems on the test for chain rule will be kind of on the easier side. And then on the next test, you'll have more difficult chain rule problems. I have no idea right now. No clue. Yeah. Yeah, what I'll do is, you know, I'll, I'll start to get an idea of what the test is going to look like as soon as we finish today, and then I'll, I'll throw something out there today for you as far as a guide. Like, for example, I can tell you right now, I mean, most of the test is going to be from limits on. Like those first few sections, probably won't see much of anything on that. Okay, chain rule. So... Up to this point, we know how to do power rule, product rule, quotient rule, and you know various things like constants and constants in front of functions. But now we want to know what we do when we have a function inside of another function. So I'll start with this first example. What if y equals 
sine of x squared plus x. So you don't have product rule here, right? Like this is totally incorrect to say that's a product, right? Because sin by itself is nothing. It's sine of x squared plus x, so there's no multiplication occurring at all, is there? What you do have, though, is a function inside of another function. So here's how we're going to do this. There was a time back in the beginning of class where I said, can you take a composition of two functions and write them out, break them down into parts, like the fog? Like, look at this function and look at it as the composition of other functions. And so let me just show you what I mean. We can call y equals sine of u, but then u was equal to x squared plus x. Do you remember us doing this? I said this would, be, this would come in helpful later. So does everyone agree that if I let y be sine of u, and I call u the x squared plus x, then if I rewrite y, Replacing u with x squared plus x, we have the original problem. Okay. Next to this, I'm going to create a table out of this. I want to know what, now watch, this is the first time I'm going to do this. I'm going to change my notation from the Newton's prime notation to the Leibniz notation. So what does dy du mean? That means I want the derivative of this, right? The derivative of y treating u as a variable. In other words, what's the derivative of sine of u? Cosine of u. Everyone agree with that? Cosine u. Okay, now below that, look at this equation here. The two variables I have are u and x, right? So u depends on x. I'll say du dx. What's the derivative of u treating x as your variable? 2x plus 1. What is it in the original problem I was asking for? The derivative, right? That's what we really wanted to know. I wanted to know what y prime was. But do you agree that's the same as me saying dy dx? That's what I want. Now, I don't know what dy dx is right now. I know what dy du is, and I know what du dx is. But does it make sense that dy dx, which is what I want, that that would be equal to dy du times du dx? Does it make sense to you that that would be true? Why? Yeah, it's like the du's would cancel each other out, wouldn't they? And you get dy dx? But what is dy du? What was that? So I'm not canceling anything, right? That was just cosine u times what was du dx? 2x plus 1. Now I'll put it in parentheses, right? So it looks like the derivative of y with respect to x, which is what we wanted, should be this part right here in the table times this part. The only issue I have right now is that my final answer has a u in it, and I should have x's. All x's. So how can I replace this u? What is u? x squared plus x. And that's sitting inside the cosine, isn't it? So that u right there became this, and that's just from the definition of what u was right there in the top, the left side up there. And then I still have sitting next to that, what? 2x plus 1. And that's our final answer. So the way that I did this problem in summary is I took the original problem, I realized it wasn't a product, wasn't a quotient, that it was a composition. I broke down the composition into 
smaller functions, smaller equations. Each of these equations I can take the derivative of. I wrote them out, then I differentiated them, then I multiplied them together, then I replaced my u with the stuff in terms of x, right? That's the idea of what the chain rule is. This right here is our chain, this right here.